Hawaii, Minnetonka. I'm David Law, Superintendent of Minnetonka Schools. Thank you for joining us for this episode of our district podcast, Ahoy, Minnetonka. Today, we're talking about the incredible early childhood and preschool programs we have here in the Minnetonka Public School District. Joining us today is Molly Bonneman, our coordinator for the ECFE and preschool programs, and Dustin Tower, who is current ECFE and preschool PTO president. Please take a little bit of time to introduce yourself and your connection to the program. Molly, we'll start with you. Thanks. I'm Molly Bonneman. I'm in my seventh year of working at Community Ed. Um, I've been in my current role as ECFE Preschool and Junior Explorers Coordinator for the last three years. Um, before I was here, I was in um, higher education for 15 years. Oh, kind of both ends of the spectrum then. Yeah, it's been really inspiring working in higher ed to be here now because I see the importance of what we do because it really matters the foundation that we set for students. You mentioned a couple things about Junior Explorer ECFE. I'm going to come back and dig into those in a little okay. bit. Uh, Dustin, uh, tell us about your your connection to the program and how long you've been involved with it. Yeah, thank you. A uh, uh, parent in the district here, grew up uh, in the east side of the metro, went to Tartan High School, so go Titans. Uh, <laughs> but my uh, lovely wife Britt and I moved over into the district in 2019. We live in Deep Haven and have three lovely daughters. Uh, Loretta, who's a first grader at Deep Haven Elementary, Alma is in her last year of preschool at uh, Minnetonka Community Ed, and we uh, just couldn't bear the thought of leaving preschool, so we decided to have one more. So our, our uh, third and final child is a uh, lovely little girl, Leland, who's six weeks old. Well, thank you for that. That connection will be great for us to keep you in the system. <laughs> yeah. Molly, you referenced a handful of programs. Can you take a little bit to describe what's an early childhood family education, what's preschool, what's junior explorers? How are those programs different? Sure. So unique to Minnesota is early childhood and family education commonly known as ECFE. Um, it's offered through all school districts within the state. Um, it's offered to families on a sliding fee um, scale, so you can choose what you pay in order to attend. It atten each class has both a parent-child component with a child educator and a parent educator, and then there's time for parent education that separates out. Um, we have licensed instructors that teach for us, and it's a really great place for families to meet other families with kids in the same age range. We also offer some cool classes for people who are caregivers. So we have a grandparents and me class, cool. which is one of my favorite ones actually. Um, Minnetonka Preschool is really unique because we have an amazing staff and licensed teachers in our classroom. The love and care that they have for students is palpable when you walk in our building. We create really amazing environments for children to learn through play. Um, each day there's time for circle time. We do snack time to get them practicing kind of those social skills of talking and small talk. Mm -hmm. We have um, free play, which is kind of set up play for them. So we look at what are we trying to learn and give them opportunities to experiment with it in different ways. We have um, small groups where we pick out students based on what they know and what they're learning and cater to their needs. And then we have large motor time and the kids either, either get to go out on our amazing new playground or play in our dedicated gym space. So just for um, parent perspective or grandparent perspective, is, is a early childhood family education class an hour or two hours? Is it one day a week or multiple days? How does that work out? So ECFE is typically a single day a week. Um, if it's a non-separating class, it's about an hour and 15 minutes. We don't start separation until about mm, between nine and 12 months, kind of depending on the group of kids. Okay. If it's a separating class, it's an hour and a half. And so 45 minutes are spent together and then 45 minutes are spent separating. We gradually go into separation. So as kids become more developmentally ready for separation, we extend that separation time. But and we the follow their lead. Age band, you, re you referenced, what's the youngest, if, if I have a toddler at home, what's the youngest and the oldest that would be appropriate for ECFE? So for ECFE, it's birth through kindergarten, okay. um, starting kindergarten. And we have a O baby class. So even if you're expecting, you can join ECFE. Oh, well. Yeah. And for now, how does that vary from preschool? So preschool is child only. Um, we offer one section for pre threes. So students who are 35 to 31 to 35 months by September 1st, that's the cutoff date. And then we have threes preschool and fours preschool. Threes preschool is two and a half hours a day, two, three, or four days a week. And fours preschool is three hours a day, three, four, or five days a week. Okay, junior explorers, 
How does that tie this all together? So Junior Explorers is our wraparound child care. Um, as children age and enter into the district, they use Explorers for before and after school mm -hmm. care. We're very similar, um, but we're more like a full daycare experience. So families can have access to care from 6.30 in the morning till six at night and go to preschool and do preschool enrichment or recreation all at MCEC. Okay. And so we work as a collective whole to move kids through their day. And then as a staff, we're a team around the family. So we work together to really understand where students are coming from and to meet them where they are and then work with their families to help them succeed. Okay. So are those Junior Explorer days Let's say I have preschool two days a week. Are they only on the days I have preschool or could it be every day of the week? It'd be every day of the week. And then two days preschool is built into it. Yep, so on two of those days, you could still be there from 6 to 30 to 6. We would just help you schedule around your preschool day and then you would select all day care with Junior Explorers on the days that you don't have preschool. Wow, awesome. Now Dustin, you heard that whole description of those things. Which of those things has your family participated in? We've, we've uh, been through many, many of those classes. So my, my oldest daughter, Loretta, started in the Forest Preschool. Uh, and, and, you know, we chose the preschool uh, initially partially, you know, it was proximity. We were five minutes down the road. It was like, hey, there's a preschool real close. That's cool. Check that out. Uh, you know, it was the Minnetonka Preschool. So we, we moved into the district because of the reputation of the district. That was a big, big selling point for moving over here. So choosing a preschool that was affiliated with the district seemed to uh, uh, just be a safe bet for us. Uh, and so joining the preschool, it was fantastic because you know the way that the classrooms are managed, our, our oldest daughter jumped right in, loved it right from the get-go. Uh, I, I think it's a testament to the licensed teachers in the classroom, mm -hmm. mainly because they're just skilled enough to be able to not only manage the classroom, but also adapt it to the different learning uh, abilities and styles of the children in the class. So uh, our middle daughter, Alma, now has been there for three years. So she started in the pre-threes, uh, which is a fantastic. I mean, it's just the cutest little class of, of <laughs> kids, like kind of figuring out how to like get along to, you know, just coexist in a classroom, you know, it's a, uh, but, but it's fantastic because that was a great exposure to it. And then she did the threes preschool last year and, and she's in fours this year. Um, and, and it, it, it's really that, that transition from year to year. I remember in the pre threes class, the first conferences with Teacher Sarah, who's amazing at, at the preschool. We love Teacher Sarah. Uh, you know, like, how, how's Alma do? Is she, you know, because she's a super shy kid, super anxious. Uh, is she interacting with the kids at all? Is she playing? And, and uh, you know, Sarah was like, oh, no, not, this is pre three. It's like, we're simply trying to just <laughs> get them to hang out in the class together and like acknowledge each other's existence. Like, that's, <laughs> that's it. And, and we're like, oh, oh, okay, we'll just, we'll just. Cool. We'll, yeah. we'll, just, we'll just settle down and let, you, let things just kind of happen as they do. And, that, and that's really the, the experience has been so great because of that kind of natural progression that happens. You just you trust the process. You know, Alma went into the threes and, you know, again, still kind of shy, but kind of that, that shell was starting to crack a little bit. And now in fours, she's, you know, pulling kids aside and teaching them how to make paper fans. And, you know, it's just hilarious that, that transition. And, um, and I, I, that's, it's that kind of cohesive uh, community too that that has been so great uh, at, at the preschool there is because uh, you know we walk in see the same teachers we had the previous year we get to say hi to them it's just like that consistency um, that that builds this foundation for you know we're, we're not worried about math and being able to spell or you know we just we just want to make learning fun we want the classroom to be just a, a, a fun engaging environment for the kids and that's, that's what we want for our girls we want them just to like enjoy uh, education and just uh, and find just kind of like what works for them. That's awesome. Uh, Molly, you referenced this and I, I, I think it's important just to share. We have licensed teachers. What, what training do they have to be a licensed early childhood teacher? Is that like going to school to be a teacher? Very similar, different? Yep. So teachers choose what path they're gonna take. So some teachers choose kindergarten through six, some choose middle school, some choose higher ed. All of my teachers cho chose early childhood. So it means that they're really versed in the essential learnings for preschool age children. And so we are able to take what they know and build a classroom that fits every kid that walks in the door. And what's interesting is that there's so much developmental change between the age of four and five. Mm -hmm. And so much can happen. And so we spend a lot of time really just getting to know who they are. And we really look at their birth date and think, hmm, yeah, they'll do this. They're just not ready for it yet. And then there's room for them to still be successful in the class. So I think they'd spend a lot of time really understanding what is developmentally appropriate 
and helping kids to reach, we call them their color bands. It's part of our teaching strategies gold assessment. Mm -hmm. And it just compares them to other kids their age and are they doing the same things their peers are? Great, then they're succeeding. And then we can use that data to scaffold. So if they're at the top of their color band, where are we going next? What do they want to try? What do they want to learn? And when they learn through play, there's just the sky's the limit of the things you can introduce them to and watch where they take the information. So for parents who aren't connected to the program, how big are these classes and how many adults are in the room? So we have a one to 10 ratio. There's a licensed teacher and a paraprofessional. Most of our classes, the biggest ones we have right now are about 18. So we have a lot of offerings and I try to balance out the classes um, so that we really have room to grow if we can or stay small if we need to. So it really depends on what kids walk through the door and we don't know them. So a lot of times they're coming to us for just a year. So we're just playing catch up, figuring out who they are with our end goal to be that they love going to school. We want them to walk into kindergarten with a desire to be there because they've had a good experience with learning. Throughout a week, morning and afternoon sessions, how many classes happen at MCEC? In preschool? In preschool. Um, we have 22 sections. Okay. So our mornings are more full than our afternoons. We are able to do some specialized programming in the afternoons. So we have a Spanish immersion preschool for people who are like, I don't know, should my kid do immersion? Do mm -hmm. I want to be an immersion parent? So it gives them the opportunity to come and try it um, and see how they do. And then we have a nature preschool class. We um, were very lucky, a PTO, um, I think it was seven years ago now, mm -hmm helped to start an outdoor learning center at our building and we have over time really grown it to be a true classroom. So this year that class didn't come inside for the first time till November. Wow. So it's really great. Dustin, one of the things that I learned as a new superintendent last year was that we have such a robust preschool PTO. And uh, you've been involved with that. What drew you into that and what keeps you involved with it, certainly as president now? Yeah, 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 Ro robust is true. We, uh, this year we've got 20, 21 inducted attendees. I think I've got two, two other people interested. M Molly and I joke it's 6% of the families in school <laughs> are, on the P are, yeah. Yeah, are on the PTO, <laughs> which, is, which is kind of funny and, and, uh, and, and, and awesome. It's great to have that, that, that representation. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, I, I like to volunteer, like to help out, you know, joining the PTO was kind of a, a two, it was something I was interested in doing, but also I kind of met a couple of the parents in school and, and uh, you know, they said, hey, you should come join the PTO. I was like, yeah, great, that, that would be cool. And, I, and, and that's, that's firstly how the, uh, it, it really kind of rebuilt itself after uh, the, the, the COVID years where, where there were, wasn't a lot of activity on the PTO. And we, when I joined three years ago, um, I, you know, I think I was the sixth or seventh person to join, um, but we had a core group um, that came out of ECFE, uh, the ECFE classes um, that joined, that kind of got us up to 10, which was great. And then this year, same thing happened again. Six or seven people have joined. They're all parents who kind of met in ECFE. Uh, I, I think that's kind of a testament to the ECFE program. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the benefits of it is you, you create these connections with other families, people who are in the exact same you know, learning uh, life area as you. Um, we did ECFE in St. Paul before we moved over with our oldest daughter and we had the exact same experience. It was like you met all these families who were going through the same things you're going through and, and kind of through those connections, um, you know, uh, the, our PTO has, has really grown because, you know, these families have kind of met and gotten to know each other. Uh, we have some great membership coordinators on our, on our, our team who uh, we call our hype team, uh, who, uh, who, who just kind of got the word out about the PTO. But, but I, I think we have such a strong PTO because of the bonds that they've kind of, you know, built in ECFE. And also they're just service-minded people who want to be able to help out. Uh, and, and it's it's great. I think I think one of the most rewarding aspects, aside from what the PTO just the, the mission of the PTO in general, but it, it's it's fun to kind of have that extra connection to the staff and the teachers mm -hmm. and just either other families in the building. You know, the the more you're in the building, the more you're meeting uh, staff members or teachers. Uh, it, it it just those, those connections I think just kind of strengthen the community as a whole. So, what are two or three things that the PTO does that people might not know about throughout the year? Well, generally speaking, uh, like most PTOs really are about advocacy and outreach. It's kind of about just building community and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, 
less about like hardcore commitments to volunteering and more about having mm -hmm. events that are that are just bringing everyone together. And and so uh, our PTO, for example, uh, uh, coming up in February 10th is a family dance party uh, up at, at the preschool, which is just a fantastic Saturday morning from 9 to 1130. Uh, kids dancing around, having fun with the DJ. Uh, and then, you know, we also have a big event in the spring, our, our spring fling, which is on May 17th. And it, it's events like these that, that, you know, they're community events. They're not just for people in the preschool, not just for people who have, you know, helped out or volunteered. It's just an event to bring early childhood families together to be able to just kind of meet each other and uh, have some fun and, and let these kids kind of like play around and, and just experience some fun, fun events. Fun. And thank you for coordinating that. Now, Molly, I'm guessing there's a deadline. Like, registration's <laughs> coming up. I know how the school cycles work. We must be signing up for fall now. What's that window of time? Um, so registration will open on Thursday, February 1st at 7.30 in the morning. So in a week. In a week, yep. We have an open house this weekend, um, Saturday the 27th. It's from 9.30 to 11.30. It's really an open house, so come as you want. It um, is a great opportunity for families to just meet each other, feel the vibe of our building. Mm -hmm. We do some really fun stuff for the kids. We do face painting and tattoos. They get to engage with some of the teachers, see the classrooms. Um, my counterpart, who is the director of Early Childhood Special Ed, Angie and I will be doing presentations for families. There'll be one at uh, 9.45 and one at 10.30. Um, we offer childcare during that time so parents can right. just you know, come and listen <laughs> and just bring any questions that they have. So it can be very confusing when you're trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. It's not just, a, I need to be there Monday through Friday so I register for this one thing. Um, so we really like to walk people through that process and answer any questions that they have. So just to recap, this Saturday is an open house to yep. learn about it. It yep. can be drop in. Registration starts a week from Thursday, February 1st. Correct. And if you really want to get crazy, there's a dance party February 10th open to anyone whether or not your kids are in preschool. Nope, yeah, exactly, yeah, C come on by. Well, I wanna thank you both for being here and taking time to talk with our community about preschool and the window of time to sign up. What, Matt, last question, Molly, if, if I missed this whole window and I just decided in May, I wanna sign up, will we, if there's spots, do we still let people sign up? Yes, so up registration is open until we're full. And so um, if there's a particular class that someone wants that's full, they can go on a wait list and mm -hmm. register for a different course or they can just wait for that course to open up. It doesn't always, but we communicate with families when we know what we know. Awesome. Thank you both for joining me for the podcast and showcasing this program. It sounds fantastic. Certainly, I've had the chance to interact and see how involved you are. I want to thank you in front of everyone. It's parent leadership that keeps our programs going, and Molly, nice job running an amazing program. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of Ahoy Minnetonka. We look forward to seeing you around for our next version.